top a little bit, like say some bullshit. Some bullshit. Yep, you're not bleeding through at all. You're good. Some bullshit. Some bullshit once told me about a bunch of bullshit. I think it was all bullshit. It sounded kind of dumb, and it was all bullshit. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm lost now. See, that should get us views. Like, if we tag, if we if we tag this video with All Star, and then leave that in the episode, then we'll get like like the algorithm might like that, and we'll get like a whole bunch of views. Be great. All right, I'm doing it. Or we'll or we'll get a copyright Smash Mouth. Come out first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no! What will we ever do, <laughs> man? You know, honestly though, like I mean, I feel like it should be like one of our like if we manage to make an enemy of Guy Fieri, like I feel like that should just be a lifetime achievement award right there. <laughs> you know, Guy Fieri. Yeah, he's like best friends with the dude from Smash Mouth. Oh, which makes I mean, you know, if you think about that for two seconds, it makes perfect sense, right? It kind of does. Yeah, like they are like bros, like they are best buds. Yeah, <laughs> that's we live in that world. <laughs> oh. Hey, I was tagged in a Facebook post. Oh, hey, I I haven't used Facebook in six years. <laughs> I try not to. People at my job have been trying to get me on Facebook. They're like, there's a bunch of really useful stuff, and I'm like, yeah, there's also not a bunch of really useful stuff and also i've been doing fine without it my life is happier without it hey there's a bunch of people i might know i do know him oh i know him too i know him don't know him that's a dog <laughs> <laughs> i don't know him but i should he looks familiar but i don't know him oh my god <laughs> He looks like somebody that I used to know. Oh, look, there's my ex-girlfriend. Oh, good. That's worth getting on Facebook for. Yep, getting off Facebook. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, time to start the episode? I believe so. All right. Times were tough, so I sold my soul. Hey, Internet Highway 47 here. We're coming to you again, once again, another time, this time, which is the, the time that isn't the last time. It's a new time, and it's, it's now. It's the time after the last time. It's the time after the last time and before the next time, and it's this time, and it's the right time for you and me and us to do this. We are having a time. I'm Shaggy B, and with me is Draco Funk. Hey, I am here. I didn't mute myself this time. Excellent. <laughs> He's absolutely here. And we are watching episode two tonight of Star Trek Picard. There is a title of this episode. I don't know what it is because I forgot to look it up, but that's fine. And we got to give a shout out. This whole project for Star Trek Picard uh, uh, is happening because of someone else. And we agreed that we weren't going to talk anymore about that. And I forgot that part. Yes. If you'd like to donate to our Patreon, um, we should make one. Yeah. Like, let us know if we should, and then we'll do it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I pro I promise you that any money that you donate to Patreon that I get out of it, I will use for my purposes. Actually, I was going to say, you know, it could go to fund like our accounts to all these subscription services. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice. I mean, that's that's all I'd use it for. Yeah. I mean, I mean assuming that it was, you know, Enough to cover that. Yeah. <laughs> or just send us, you know, you could send us enough money to buy beer while we to drink while we do this. That know. would be lovely. Just, you yes. know, actually just bring us beer. Like, if you're listening to this, you probably know us personally. And if you don't know us, um, 
send email an email beer. to <laughs> yeah. email yes. beer to Harry Potter 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 Potter. recipes at gmail.com or highway 47 yeah highway 47 productions at gmail.com email us a six pack of beer and we'll drink it virtually i guess uh, so we are watching episode two of Star Trek Picard, and, uh, and it is and titled I... Maps and Legends because I did look it up. Good, good. That sounds like a great title. Maps and Legends. Maps and Legends, which is interesting because a legend is a part of a map. And a map has legends on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, the part of the map. <laughs> That is the legend is where the legend is on a map. <laughs> what if the map itself is a legend? I mean, I've seen some legendary maps. I have a map actually that I've been meaning to put up in in my uh, in my in my in my computer room here, my recording room. That uh, is like a it's 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 one of those like nighttime satellite view maps where you see like the city lights everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. And and I I bought I found that at a thrift store. I bought actually last time I came and visited you. Um, picked it up at a thrift store. It's one of those like three panel canvas things. It's like three and a half, four feet tall. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's been sitting, it's been propped up against my desk, desk, not on the wall across from me where I could be looking at it right now. <laughs> and, I should put it up on the wall, you know, beside, right above my guest bedroom so it can fall on you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best part about that was, was the, the poster that fell, the, the framed poster that did fall on me in the middle of the night had been hanging upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a dude playing clarinet, but he had been on the wall upside down. And and like I didn't realize this until after, you know, it fell and I caught it and it woke me up and I looked at it and like I kind of put it back up because you know it you know fell the, over. The funny part like, is that, that that poster is a misprint and it's printed <laughs> upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and the words are at the top, so it's right. It was right side up, sort of. <laughs> oh man! Wow. <laughs> you, you know, I have a T-shirt like that. That's like the like um. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a logo for a beach town that mm -hmm. I went to last summer, and and like you know, it, like they were selling it like on the discount rack at one of the beach souvenir shops because like the logos, like they were all like silk screened upside down. So like mm -hmm. the entire like print on the t-shirt is like the wrong way up. I was like, of course I'm gonna buy this. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like a third the cost of like a regular t-shirt for the town. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I can look down and know where I was, and I'm the one who matters, you know. <laughs> it was great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I um changing topics, I had um I had some thoughts about um, about the pilot episode since we last watched it. And I wanted to, I wanted to discuss kind of a, a concept that came to mind because something, you know, something kind of stuck in my head that, that was wrong. And, and, and I didn't really know how to articulate it. And it finally kind of hit me actually earlier today. And I, I wanted to throw this at you and, and see if there's any, any meat to this or if I'm crazy or both. And and uh, what I, what I finally kind of came to that bothered me in that episode, besides the things we talked about, like the editing and the pacing and things like that, um, boils down to what I'm gonna what I'm gonna refer to as the homogenization of pop culture. And and give me a second to explain that. Um, it kind of used to be that, and 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 it's still true to a degree, but you know. There, there was very much a time when every sort of franchise, whether it be a TV show or a movie or whatever, had its own style and its own mood, and and there were there was like a language of of there was like a cinematic language that you would only use in that world, right? Yeah, like you know, like like Star Trek ships in space behave differently than Star Wars ships or Battlestar Galactica ships or or you know Babylon Five ships or whatever. For example, or like you know, um, even even down to like 
you know, they're, they're like 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 soap opera soap operas used to be filmed a certain way. You know, like the 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 camera placement was a certain way. You know, or whatever the pacing was a certain way. The music cuts were a certain way. But then you would watch a different style of show, and it was it was different, right? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 what I kind of realized as I was watch as I was thinking about it, and I did rewatch the pilot episode one time between then and now. Um, is that I was I was constantly thinking of other other like worlds, like other sort of franchise universes or other sort of genres, like all the time. Um, and, and where it really stuck out to me, first of all, was was in the fight scenes. You know, there's the two big, you know, martial arts style fights. First of all, martial arts style fighting, you know, in Star Trek not so much a thing, you know, you're, you're not like they, that didn't ever used to happen. I'm not going to say that that by itself is, is a, is a bothersome thing, but like the way they did it um, in that, like, if you looked at what, what Dodge was able to do and, and I understand that it's part of the character, but you know, she did like a force jump, right? <laughs> you know, like, like a, like a, like a, like a Jedi style run and jump at superhuman speed up a staircase thing. I, I know where you're go I, I know where you're going with this, and I'm gonna um, tag some stuff thoughts onto the end of this. But keep going. Sure. Yeah. Um, she used a bunch of pro wrestling moves, like like you know stuff that I mean you know I was a wrestling fan as a kid, and if Crowder was here, he could comment on this too because we both were. And Draco Funky, shout out to you. But like um, you know, she was doing stuff that 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 you know. I mean, they do stuff like that in pro wrestling because there's a way to do it relatively safely. You know, like you're not going to hurt anybody seriously doing a German suplex, you know, it, unless they take it horribly wrong or you, you know, slip and fall in the middle of it or something like that. But it was like, it was like so clearly choreographed. And, 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 and I kept, I was thinking of that. I was thinking of, of, you know, you know, force jumping and stuff like that. And then on kind of a broader scale, like it, one of my like biggest complaints in modern, I say modern past 10, 12 years, you know, sort of, um, you know, action and things like that. And, 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 you know, big epic stories is why is there always a teenager who has superpowers? Like, why is there always some kid who, who, you know, who, oh, they don't understand their origins and they're an innocent person, but something happens and now they magically a super genius or they are magically, you know, able to fight. Like, look at Rey in the new Star Wars. Like, why is there, and, and Captain Kirk in Star Trek 09, actually the whole crew. Like, why are they all 15-year-olds, but they are somehow, like, the chosen ones of the universe? Like, when did that become a thing and why why does it have to happen everywhere and why do we have to shoehorn it in here? So I'd I'd like to know your opinion on that. Okay. Well, first of all, the thing that um really gets me and you're gonna have to hold on for a second because I gotta call for I'm gonna Yeah, no problem. I will too. <coughs> See, I muted mine. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks for you. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, so let me start again. Sure. So um, basically the fight scenes and the choreograph, the thing is in modern times, I think it, the first time I remember seeing fights like this was like the born identity. It's, it, yeah. it's the kind of choreographed fight scene where you actually have no idea what the hell's going on. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now Star Trek, I will say did do martial arts started style fighting a lot, except they filmed it in their own style like they never jumped to a different angle they just showed it the person went after him did the move and then yeah. maybe they changed angles um but it was never a big deal it was like one move and somebody did something um but it was well, always filmed in the star trek style yeah. now everything is filmed kind of in this um Jackie Chan, like John Woo, like, you know, Kill it's, Bill. It's not just that. The thing that gets me the most, um, all, like, TV shows and movies, they don't light things the way they used to. 
That's very if true. You remember, if you remember back to the next generation, it was really bright. Yes. Deep Space Nine was a little darker. Voyager, even darker. Enterprise, even dar darker. And now this, they film everything. It's just really well, dark. I and I think part of that has to do with camera technology. But... I, I, th I think I think that's a split between um, between the fact that everything is like super super high definition. I mean, this I'm I'm sure this was shot in in you know if not if at least 4K, you know, probably 8K or or higher um, resolution. And and you know, in order to get the kind of detail that lets you know that you're in that kind of resolution, they have to shoot it real high. And the other thing is is HDR, you know, yeah, um, which I mean HDR. Five six years ago was kind of a joke, but but they've they've toned it down and they've made it a thing that you don't necessarily notice at a first glance. But but in comparison, you know, like you said, um, it is very different. But but part of that too, you know, they're making it for modern displays. You know, yeah. I mean, at 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 minimum, everyone has a 1080p HD TV with really really good contrast and color. You know, color color quality, and and. Even up through enterprise, most of us were watching things on 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 analog CRTs through you know RF connectors, right? So, <laughs> so so I think that that is a lot of times a, a victim of, of the technological progress. And that's, and the truth of it is, when you're in that high def, you know, like like I'm watching this on, you know, like a, like about a 22 inch 1080p screen that I'm sitting maybe 18 inches away from, right? And and most people will watch this either on something like that or on their phone three inches from their face or or on like a 65 inch 4k you know tv so like the 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 chance of you catching a mistake is way higher <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and and that's and that's kind of going back to and and you know you talk about the camera cuts and that's that's one of the things that you know as as a person who was a wrestling fan as a child you know it's all fake but when you're watching it on a on an analog TV screen that's 12 inches across from the other side of the room, and it was filmed on you know VHS quality film anyway, from halfway across an arena, you don't see that the punches miss, right? But right. in in 1080p with really good lighting, yeah, you can absolutely tell that everything is totally fake unless they cut the camera every three seconds or in the middle of a move or something like that. So I understand where that comes from to a degree, but it really is hard to watch. <laughs> can I can I <clears throat> say something else? Sure. The lighting thing bothers me because not every show is doing that, and I want to yeah go back to the one show that's kind of not doing it in the style of Star Trek is the Orville. If you go back and look at that, well, there you go. It's yeah, really bright. You're, you're absolutely right, actually. <laughs> and I'm pretty and, sure that's on purpose. Yeah. You're I have absolutely this, right. I have this feeling they're going to get on a ship and it's going to be dark. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, you can't avoid, you know, little clips of teaser previews and stuff. And, and we kind of saw that a little bit. Um, um, and the other thing about the 15 year old boy suddenly gets superpowers. That's been a trope in stories from a long time ago. And I think that's just a trope where we all dream of, of being the getting special powers i mean spider-man well, harry potter um most japanese anime because every mech has to be powered by a 15 year old girl for some reason yeah yeah i suppose that's true i just it it, it, it wasn't overplayed yet in star trek until wesley and well but they yeah. even shut that down though like i, like I they, know but they started it they did start it and then and so and, too or no, right. three. Was it two or three? It was two. It was two, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it wasn't it was. a racist thing. It was. But, you know, and you look at it and everybody hated it. <laughs> and, and, and they hated it so much that they took Wesley off the show or he decided to quit. Or I don't remember what the, what the exact story was. But, and then, you know, Deep Space Nine, they had a kid and everybody was upset. But they made Jake Sisko a side character. They made him not a soldier. They made him not, you know, the key to the whole thing. He wasn't the chosen one, and neither was Nog, you know. 
and and that was much better. <laughs> but now yeah. they have to go back to this formula because, you know, literally just because everybody else is doing it. We do need to we do need to move we do need to move on. But I want to make one more prediction for this episode that is a little bit off that topic. I would love to hear everybody's comments on that. Post a message in the comments or send us an email if you have ideas about what we said. If you want to respond to that, um, but also I want to make one prediction for this episode that also hit me this week. Have you read um, William Shatner's first Star Trek novel, The Ashes of Eden? Yes. Do you see where I'm going? No. Okay. So the plot of the Ashes of Eden. Where the Romulans bring... um... It's more or less that Captain Kirk comes out of retirement and goes rogue on a ship with a bunch of vagabonds to go rescue a young Romulan with superpowers. I think that's what we're about to watch. Except it's Picard. So anyway, that's my prediction for the next few episodes of Picard. Probably the whole series, because they can't do episodic TV anymore. It's just not a thing that anybody knows how to do now. Um, yeah. I, I... Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I like, you know, the whole opera thing, but, you know, I also enjoy the... I enjoyed Babylon 5 because it wasn't episodic. Right. And, and, you know, serial TV has its place. It can be really, really good. It's not what made Star Trek a good franchise. And, and I will go so far as to say that it hurt Deep Space Nine in, in the seventh season. The last 10 or 12 episodes of Deep Space Nine, I, I will die on this hill, are not as good as people say they are. Because they are just, those episodes are just like going through the motions to tie up loose ends. They're shot like soap operas. There's no, there's no effort put into the actual execution of those episodes, except for maybe the CG, and and it's just disappointing. That's my opinion there. So, but this is going to be better, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So we are watching this. Yes, we oh. are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. This is on CBS All Access. You should get your episode counter at zero. Um, we are watching the commercial-free version. And Scrodrick, tell him what we do. He's not here, is he? He is not here. No, he's 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 busy learning learning truths that man was not meant to know in in the newer world. So what's going to happen is Shaggy's going to give you a five-second countdown. And have your manipulators on the play button, and we will start this together. Absolutely, um, I do believe that we are watching the the, the 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 at the time we are watching this, we will have a short little like only on CBS All Access clip for a few seconds at the beginning, and we will give you a counter time when that has ended and the actual episode starts. So uh, be aware of that. When we start the countdown, if it goes to zero and you start and you're right in the episode, you will need to wait a little bit, but we will give you an exact time to start. And if you need to go back and do that, you know. Who knows? They might put that out. They might even put that on the DVD version because they very well, they very well might. Um, but, you know, you are you all are capable, intelligent, technologically savvy people, and you can handle this. We believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> yes. All right. With that, you ready to get started? Yes. All right. This is Star Trek Picard, episode two, which has the title that I forgot. Maps and Legends. That one, yes. And we are starting it together in five, four, three, two, one. Bang. Yep, CBS All Access Originals. Five, six, seven. Okay, so that was eight seconds in. It starts. And now we're at the previews. Oh, it's a previously on Star Trek thing. It's a, it's a recap. Hmm. Oh. 
All the stuff that happened. Yeah. To do. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't wearing a cloak. She was not. When she does that jump, I really want the sound effect from like the um, million dollar man or what's the, yeah. what was the female version of that? Oh, I don't remember. I don't use the word androids. You know, have you noticed that like every top that Picard is wearing has a place for a comm badge? <laughs> I like, I like when this plane, he has a brooch there. Like, Oh, this guy. Yeah, I wanted to complain about that guy, too. Romulan hipster. Yeah. Okay, we're at one minute and 44 seconds. I believe the episode has started. Yes, it is. There's a fleet of... Ooh, wow, freighters. Oh, now we know the date. Now I know the year. Okay. So this is 2399. 14 years yeah. prior to Picard. Yes. I, I expected a Bill Cosby ask, like. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a jello pudding pop? Yeah. Good morning, hoobly dooba dab the dooble dubbers. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> He's totally like a person. Aww. No, it doesn't. I don't like racists in my Star Trek. <laughs> See, this doesn't feel like Star Trek. I, I mean... I will say that, um, you know, having racism in Star Trek is a very, you know current societal, you know, good commentary. That was okay. That's two shits in one minute. Oh, the phasers are going to say hi. Why do they have... Why do they have weapons like that just hanging on the wall there? I don't think it was a weapon. Well, until he... Yeah. Well... And here's the theme...
things that things that don't seem like Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke, um, like. <laughs> That was the problem. They didn't push F8 and boot into the right operating system. He booted into Linux, and then it just all went wrong. Oh, no, wait. F8 is the one that gets you into safe mode. That seemed very unsafe. <laughs> is that what I'm saying? They should have booted him in, in safe mode. I do like the theme song. This is better than Enterprise's theme. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't have lyrics. But it has been a long time. <laughs> long road. STP. STP. It's better than, you know, Discoveries. Yeah, STD. Here we are. Oh, hey, I remember that shot from the last episode. I'm a child. <laughs> so we've got the section 31 of Romulans, okay. Hmm. So what Scratterick is doing right now. Why do they cut? Oh. Just give me a linear. Oh my god! It's it's it's. it's... Huh, it is unreliable. Did she say fuckers? Probably in Romulan.
like Republicans and black people. Hey, they don't like Mexicans either. That's a good point. Or gays. Or Muslims. Liberals. The poor. Educated people. Scientist. We should stop. It's about time we called him out, I think. But hey, you know. <laughs> the system. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got me to finish a beer. Absolutely. I have to say I am appreciating their discussing technology on a modern perspective, like on today's perspective, rather than the way they did in the 80s and 90s. I have to leave Earth in Star Trek? Mm, looks like a board cube. Yeah. Quacks like a board cube. Yeah, that's why she's interested in you, Kylo Ren. Well, let's see, we're 15 minutes into episode two, and they're in bed together. I think that beats Next Generation. No, Riker went faster. Is that a cello solo? Yep, sure was. Uh oh.
It's mm-hmm. what I'm gonna hate myself for this, and you're gonna hate me more. But what's the name of the guy from Twilight that this asshole is making me think of while watching Star Trek? Jake is Jacob. He's like a Twilight guy, isn't he? Is it Jacob and Edward? Edward. This is the. This is fucking. This is this guy is fucking Edward from Twilight, and he's. I'm. Ha- I have to watch it. He's fucking Edward and her. <laughs> that would be more interesting, at least. <laughs> Wait, commercial I, break we we're back Woo. a relic Oh, God. What was he supposed to have? Um, from all good things. Yeah. Aromatic syndrome. Another shot of the bridge. Wee. Dude, I want one of those. How does that thing know where they want to go? You have to say the name as you enter the fireplace. Wait, wrong, wrong. (laughs) Oh, I get it. It's the Enterprise. But they don't show Enterprise from Enterprise. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh no. Is 
Is that? Hmm. Commercial break. We. Oui. We're back. I mean, zippers are an obsolete technology. It's fair. The gray zone. <laughs> okay, that sign's pretty funny. What did it say? I missed it. It said this this facility has gone blank days without an assimilation, and there was, you know, like a high number. Only if they're a hipster. Only after Twilight. Chekhov's Radiant Badge. Mm-hmm.
You're just a couple of girls who get turned on by vampires, like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Patrick Stewart has said about himself. <laughs> Just read and read it while you pour it. Yeah, she's um subscribed to slash yeah. to our Android. Yes. Hey, so am I. She's after a vampire dick. Ugh. Really? So they're doing this on all access so that they can say fuck and so they can show gore. All right. Now the clock's on fire. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't wind it. It's so dark. It's pretty dark. I mean, I know, I know, but 
for this particular room, okay. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Now this shot isn't too badly lit. I mean, it's night. Dark outside. <laughs> Oh, you can see the microphone below his shirt. Look. Like Starfleet isn't going to intercept that. Yeah, really. Commercial break. Whee! We're back. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like, as if they wouldn't be tracking him. I do appreciate that they're using the, um, like, the future communicator emblem badges thingy. Yeah. It's the first time we've seen a Commodore in uh, Star Trek since um, original series. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I hit the wrong button. I wonder how many episodes it's going to take to convince the actor to come back and play Boost Maddox. I know, right? So, they're in the Tal Shiar? I guess so. Hire some more droids. Yeah, really. There's got more than enough droids now. I mean, the Jawa dumpster will come by, you know. Oh, wait. Who hates Picard?
She really reminds me of Savick, played by Christy Alley. Yeah, definitely. So I'm getting a real, like, Founders and Wayoon vibe here is what I'm getting. Everything has at stake. Yeah. I'm I'm just I don't I'm I'm not buying it somehow. <laughs> like it it's too much drama. It's too too like they're they're hyping I they're 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 overselling it. <laughs> who is she who knows now well, back to Edward Okay, so we are we're like twenty minutes into stalling for time so that stuff can happen in episode three. And it's starting to drive me crazy right now. Are you getting that vibe also? I'll I'll speak on this later. Okay. Did we do an IMDb rating for this? I think so. 7.5. Thank God it's lower than the pilot. Okay, we get it. Like, just... <sighs> you're Okay, you're, you're the bad guys. I understand. Uh huh. It's a, it's a shame that you're like a douche. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, just it's the 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 threat is existential and horrible, and it matters a lot right now. Commercial break. That's the end of. The... That. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, I'm stopping it there. <laughs> I congratulations. I don't care at all what happens in episode three now. <laughs> you know, can I say something? Yes, please. This wasn't as good as the pilot, but I feel like some of this isn't their fault. Some of it is. This type of show is what. Is what it has to be. 
I know, and I hate saying it. <sighs> we, we, oh. I know. That that didn't like they could have done more in all the time they spent being threatening at each other. They could have done a thing or two. That comes from being serialized instead of being instead of being episodic. Yeah. Because you don't have to tell the whole story. No, you can film a soap opera, which is what they just they just felt like 90 minutes into this series, it's now a soap opera again. And I don't, that's not what I'm watching Star Trek for. Ah, I am frustrated. We need to approach this from a different way. We do. We can't approach it as we're watching an episode of Star Trek. Yeah. We have to approach this because when you go to watch a movie, you don't approach the movie as an episode of Star Trek unless it's um, Insurrection. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would, I'd still say, Star Trek Insurrection was the best two-part Next Generation episode ever. Absolutely. Second best. Best. Okay, yeah, second best. But it was like top two. <clears throat> anyway. Um, because if we approach it as... It can't be the next generation. It just can't because that wouldn't work today. You're right. Now, if we rewind ourselves and take this back and approach it as we're going to watch a serialized story with Picard. Featuring that, Jean-Luc Picard. And he did seem more like Picard in this episode. I, I, I will praise that. If we, if we go to approach this, and here, here's a really big reality. We're never going to get something like the next generation again they just can't do it no, and even can't. if they did it it wouldn't work well and and yeah just like and i i hear all your frustrations and i echo them but if we approach it the way we have been we're going to be nothing but frustrated yeah you're right so so what we're going to have to do is 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 think about a new perspective expect it to be what it is because it's not going to be like the next generation. It just, they can't do that again. And we should treasure what we had. <laughs> <laughs> and th there are some good things about this that I really am happy about. Oh yeah. This episode, um, I'm not as happy about because this is all the first episode was, you know, setting up the story. This one is setting up the series. And they had to do that, but you're right, um, because it's serialized, they spend, they spend a lot more time expositioning instead of storytelling. Yeah, and, and I mean, okay, so, so one of the things that, that, that I've come to appreciate in, 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 any, in any TV or movie is, is show me, don't tell me right? Show me action. Show me the plot. Like, let me experience it. The whole, I mean, if I wanted to be told a story, you know, I would be listening to, I would be listening to somebody tell me about it. You know, I wouldn't be trying to watch it. The point of, the point of a TV show or a movie is that it's immersive. You get to experience the plot. And we just sat through 20 minutes of being told things. We didn't see that the stakes were high. We saw two people talking to each other about how angry they're going to get because this thing matters, but we don't really know why. We don't really get the sense that there are stakes here, that this is a big deal to them. We get it with Picard because we saw Picard. We, we were there. like We experienced the meeting with Taj. We experienced all that stuff. And so that matters there. But I'm going to go out, go out on a limb and say this episode had to be made to appease a bunch of people sitting around a table. That very well could be. And I hate that, and I know what happens, and I know what, and I've seen shows who refuse to do that, and I know what happens to them. And I, and I think the list of things that have to be done, like the list of boxes to check, just gets longer and longer and longer as time goes on. You know that. 
Absolutely. <laughs> we, we know that in our jobs. Absolutely. So painfully so. Yeah, absolutely. And well, that yeah. that was this episode. It had yeah. to check off a box. And all the other episodes are still going to have boxes they're going to check off. <sighs> I feel like this episode could have been told in 15 minutes. It could have. It absolutely could have. You know, this, everything in this episode would have been act two. And, and I, I know we just said we're not going to do, we're not going to expect this to be a next generation episode, but everything that happened in this episode could have been act two of a single next generation episode. It would have been the camera shot from the console with data sitting in the chair, typing at the thing at the back of the bridge. And, you know, another senior officer leaning over like, Oh, what did you find? That would have been it, you know? And like, and, and I mean, I remember, I remember being a kid and watching next generation the first, you know, for the first few times. And then like, seeing that camera shot come on and being like, Oh Lord, they're just going to talk about things for like 10 minutes and I'm not going to see anything. But we just like, even if that would have been better. (laughs) I have to realize when watching this, that it's going to be, this is serialized and it's going to be that way. But this is a story. Hopefully it's going to be a good story. Hmm. I'm, my 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 faith my faith is shaken, man. My faith is shaken. I hear you, I hear you. Uh, but we have to approach it from that if because if we approach it as from our original expectations, yeah, they're shattered. But I I still want to see what happens next. They, what, I'm really frustrated that, that it, it is taking so long. Like, I'm waiting for him to get back on a ship, and I felt like they should have got there by the end of the first episode. But yeah, yeah, and and I feel like they're not going to get there till the end of the third episode. Yeah, at, at least, yeah, and I, it may take longer. And and I'm I'm oh god, yeah, I really hope not. <laughs> So, so, okay. So positives. All right. There were fewer, there were way fewer times in this episode that I was taken out of the episode by the editing and by the way they cut things. It happened a lot, but it didn't happen nearly as much as in the pilot. I think they really worked on that. And that's well, whether or not they worked on it or not, it's better. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate that I'm, that there are a couple of characters that I'm invested in. Um, like the two, you know, the, the two Romulans that are kind of Picard's caretakers, you know, those people I care about. Um, I like the, even though it's a little bit of a stretch, I like that the lady is obviously a Tal Shiar operative or a former one. And, you know, maybe he is too, who knows? Um, that's a neat little twist. I like that. Um, I like the scientist from the Daystrom Institute. She's a good character. I'm in. I'm into that dynamic between the two of them. Um, I, I think they've introduced a villain in the hip, hipster Romulan. Yeah, in, in Edward. I'm going to call him the hipster hipster Eric. That's his name from now on. No, <laughs> Edward. Hipster Edward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's probably got some stupid name like Brayden or, you know, Skyler. They've said his name, but I can't remember. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Hipster Edward. Hipster Edward, yeah. The Romulan, maybe Borg kind of spy dude with a dark past. I guess. And a, and a like, day old five o'clock shadow. Like, yeah. 29 hour long five o'clock shadow. And who is playing hard? Who to was get. doing it before it was cool? Yeah. Did you notice? Like he, um, I mean, he was, he was, he is, he is like on on the manipulate this girl with every trick in the book train. Like, and and they they're doing that very well. Like the whole like manipulate and control and abuse a young woman who doesn't know any better gimmick that he's got going. Like there, that train is is like charging down the tracks. Like. You know, new girl involved. He goes straight to her and doesn't make eye contact with his girlfriend. You know, mm-hmm. like <laughs> every little that is being pulled off really well. I mean, he's very hateable, and 
as, as much as I hate him, I have to I have to concede that that he's he's designed very well to be hateable, and it's done it's it's pulled off quite well. I still don't want him on the screen, but I I see what they're doing, and and it's good. Ah oh, man, I just telling you, we we just. <laughs> just... end of episode two and we're giving each other this man like we can make it through man we gotta do this the people want it man just just keep your head in the game man <laughs> we, can't, we can't let down we can't let down the Hulkamaniacs brother uh, uh. And, uh, just you know, it, let, let's go back. Let, let's just, I want to rewind you and give you a scenario. If we were doing this again with the next generation, uh-huh. and we just imagine we just watched the third episode. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. True. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Okay. That is a good point. That is, that is a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But I tell you what, I am not going to be ready to watch episode three for a week. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm just I. Uh, 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 it's it started off strong though, you know, like this episode, like the beginning of the episode, like okay, like well, I don't, I don't know. And what you I'm said, you, man, you know, you said the IMDb was seven point five. Yeah. Okay, so just for just for just for comparison's sake. You you have to also remember that IMDB ratings are, are fluid. They are, but I'm 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 gonna look up the Orville, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm 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 gonna look up I wanna see I wanna see just like some episodes that were about there, right? Season one of the Orville. The pilot of the Orville was also a 7.5. Old ones. And, like, I can't... You can't tell me that this was better than that. <laughs> or, or as good, you know? What else was 7.5? There's 7.8s. Uh, Into the Fold, that's the one where... Um, okay, that's the one where the shuttle with the doctor and the kids and Isaac get stuck on the planet, and there's like the survival stuff. Much better than this, I think. Jaloja is only seven point two. Yeah, you're and you're right. IMDb, you know, ratings are fluid and all that, but oh, I, this is not gonna. I'm just saying. That also we gotta, you know, realize what it is. We're yeah. trying to make the, we're trying to make this a turkey and it's a duck. Yeah, and you know what? But, I it, say. but it but it has it has turkey written on it. <laughs> I know, but man, you know what they say? Can you quack like a duck? <laughs> oh, well, I know what this episode can do, and I can't say it here. And that may be a good point to end this episode. <laughs> Oh, God. Thank you all for joining us. We will make it through more of these as long as we keep getting our... Uh, our, our our Patreon. Our yeah. full Dude. Patreon. Dude, I, you know, I might start charging people money to let us make the... No, I'm not going to do that. Like, no. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's going to be better, and I think there are going to be good moments, but we have to remember, man, it's a duck. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a duck with turkey written on it, but it's a duck. A duck can still be good. I mean, I've had worse. Okay, it, it did kind of hurt hearing a Starfleet Admiral say fuck. That happened three times. There were three F-bombs in this episode. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, not to say that, you know, I mean, we, we, we drop them all the time, but... I know. <laughs> <laughs> This is the most times I've said fuck an entire episode we've ever fucking did. I can't <laughs> believe I'm still saying fuck. <sighs> <laughs> that would have made a that would have made the Wrath of Khan interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> that's that's that was, 
that that was the line in the mirror, in in the mirror universe. <laughs> That's what Kirk said. <laughs> oh God. Good night. Good night, everybody. Oh Christ. <laughs>